Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time as we present the starting lineup for the first modified event here at the New Smyrna Speedway to kick off Speed Week festivities. There's no question about it, 31 of the best ground-pounding modifieds have come out to the New Smyrna Speedway. They are like gladiators ready to do battle. The story has been this. In qualifying here today, it was Matt Hirschman who turned in the Fast Time presentation, but then all of a sudden, by luck of the draw, it changed the entire starting lineup. The top four would do a quick invert. As the cars are staged and ready, we will present to you the starting lineup for this evening's presentation. Scheduled to start at the point will be the number 46 machine. That, of course, is no stranger to running up front on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome former winner and front runner from the Stafford Motor Speedway, the Miller Place New York driver for Craig Lutz. Alongside the MRS, the Modified Racing Series champion, he'll be driving a Raceworks machine. This, of course, is the number 92 car. And driving car number 92, it will be the very talented and versatile driver, Anthony Nocella, in the Nocella Paving K&D Associates car. Row number two to the inside. This gentleman won at Dover a couple of years back. Jan Leedy, the legendary driver and crew chief of the automobile for the driver of car number 07. That's Patrick Emmerling out of Holland, New York, driving the saline hot dog machine. We move now to the next starting spot. It'll be the man they refer to as Big Money Matt, driving car number 60. That, of course, is the PD Racing Enterprises Special. This gentleman has had more success here at New Smyrna Speedway than most. With over 25 career wins, he won the Richie Evans Memorial event, and he, true, is one of the top guns to beat. From Northampton, Pennsylvania, 36 years of age, it is Matt Hirschman with car number 60. Our next starter on the grid is a gentleman who's moved up to the big time, but he is in the hearts of all of us. Setting behind the wheel of Eddie Partridge's race car, the T.S. Haulers machine, Hoosier of Calverton, sponsors the car from Berlin, Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the 2013 Wheel and Modified Tour Champion and World Series Champion in 2015, 16, and 17, the sixth New York for Ryan Priest. In the sixth starting spot, his series started out with a misfortune, but he overcame all of that. Driving his machine, it'll be Tyler Ripkema, driving the number 32 car in the Musco Lighting Nelcorp uh, sponsored Chevrolet. Moving now to the next starting spot, this guy was always strong here at New Smyrna, the Gershaw Recycling. He won both in the North and the South on the Wheel of Modified Tour action from Franklin, Tennessee. Would you welcome J.R. Batuccio? In the ninth starting spot, driving the number, in the ninth starting spot, it'll be the Gershner machine. That, of course, is Jerry Gershner. Gershner scheduled to start back in that position there as well. Next on our grid, as we work our magic and work our way through the field, as we take a look at the competition here and so forth with it, our next starter to the field will be the number five car. That, of course, is car number five. The driver is Carl Ebersol, the 29-year-old driver of the Ebersol excavating machine from Mooresville, North Carolina. Our next starter on the grid will be car number 21K. This is a gentleman in a family that's long competed here, driving the number 21J car. The driver is Jimmy Zachariah from Candor, New York. In the 11th starting spot, it'll be the number 22 car. This is Eddie McCarthy out of Brick, New Jersey, the McCarthy Marine Sales and Service car, the BNR Fabrication car. Moving now to our next starting spot, it'll be one of the standouts in the modified tour, set out most of the season with a problem with a broken back, believe it or not. Driving the Grasso Brothers prepared number 36, starting in the 12th starting position, David Zapienza. From the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, he cut his teeth and he became a household name at the Battle of the Beach. Driving car number 30, correction, car number 58. It will be the number 58 car, the driver that being Eric Goodale out of Riverhead, New York, the Gaff Roofing Company cars with three wins on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Next on the starting grid will be the number 83, defending champion of the Modified Racing Series, driving car number 83. It is Mike Willett 
out of Grantham, New Hampshire, driving the Spirit of Alaska-sponsored race car. Moving now further down into the starting lineup, it'll be the number 45, a second-generation driver from Brewster, Massachusetts, the 137 uh, Shell machine, the J-Star graphics car for Brett Mazurvi, the 2017 Pro 4 Modified Champion. We now move into our 16th starting position. The driver setting behind the wheel of car number 09. Last time he competed here in 2009 from Waiting River, Long Island, New York, the Riverhead Building Supply Van Hooten Trucking Company car. It is Brad Van Hooten. Working down through the lineup in the 17th starting spot, it will be the number 16 car. 36-year-old driver from Fort Mammoth, New Jersey, driving the Blue Mountain Machine, F&H Future Homes Customs Machine. It is Anthony Cecily. Behind Cecily on the starting grid is the number four car, brand-new LFR car, CNG surfacing, Cerebello Automotive from Feeding Hills, Massachusetts. It is Jeffrey Gallup. Moving now in the 19th position, the casualty of practice today, driving the number 21 car, the Atlantic Coast Sprinklers, Gershaw Recycling, Trump for President machine. Ladies and gentlemen, from Howell, New Jersey, they call him Showtime. Six-time winner on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, it is Jimmy Blewett. Schedule to start back in the 20th starting position. In the 20th starting spot will be the number 54 car. That, of course, is Tommy Catalano. In the FX Capanna, CW Ward, CP Ward, Woolwood Brake Sponsored Car. Then we go to a gentleman who's just done about everything imaginable. Working with Dale Earnhardt, a broadcasting and racing as well. He'll set behind the wheel of the Fountain Racing Enterprises number 33. It is Andrew Petrie. Car number 23 will be next on the grid. That's Joey DeGrecia out of Lindenhurst, New York, driving the Gotham West Developers Pony Ice Car. Next, we go to the number 56 machine for Amy Catalano out of Ontario, New York, the CP Ward car. She's a former Holland and New York State champion as well as Spencer Speedway. Then it'll be Kevin Shea with car number 41 from Mystic, Connecticut, a graduate from the SK Light Division in the Colonial Tire and Recovery car. Our final competitors will be the number 14 of Brock Brown out of Shikshimi, Pennsylvania, the Eagle Align, CNM Sanitation, Alpine sponsored race car. Then we go to car number seven, independent runner out of Fork River, New Jersey, the Seacoast Automotive and Accounting. Uh, car number seven for Rich Parker. Starting in the final row will be the number 21 machine of Paul Townsend. That's the orange 21, the Snap-on Tools car. And starting scratch with the number 64. He made his debut here in last year's series event. It'll be Tyler Catalano in the Power and Construction Group car, the CP Ward machine. If you've never witnessed the Tour Type Modified, ladies and gentlemen, get ready. One year ago, Doug Goby dominated the action in this event with Patrick Emmerling and Matt Hirschman being among the shining stars there. The field rumbles away from the starting grid. Last opportunity to see these 2,600-pound rocket sleds as they're about to pave the pavement and pound the pavement. 13 and a half inches of racing rubber. Hoosier Tire is the official tire of choice. And let's go down now to Derek, down on pit road. Derek? So it looks like we're about ready to get him fired up here for this, the first night of competition. If you're enjoying this presentation, those of you that are tuned in to us, and listening in for the first event for the Tour Type Modified, we're glad to have you on board with us for this evening's presentation. A lot in store tonight. As we said, this is the oldest division in NASCAR. There is no question about it. They are the fastest division that you will see here at the Half Mile facility. It all began way back with a gentleman by the name of Wild Bill Slater and Clyde Hart, who had the concept of bringing open-wheel modifieds from the north to the south. 
That was 54 years ago. And Robert Hart, Jane Hart, and Andrew Hart, they raised the bar even higher as they brought the competitive nature and Southern hospitality to a new dimension. And now let's head back down to uh, Derek Percy. Well, it's always a treat having the modifieds here at the New Smyrna Speedway for their World Series of Asphalt Racing. 50 laps tonight for these modifieds, and they're just turning in their hot laps right now, just to try and some best. You can check out some of the guys that are in the field tonight as you watch on NBC Gold and Track Pass. You've got Ryan Priest, a cup driver in the field. You also have Jimmy Blewett, who's a hot shoe down at the Wall Stadium. Champions, let's talk about them. about ready to double them up. Ralph and the starters stay in here to kick things off for this evening's presentation. There's a look at a CD chassis car. Ryan Freese, a gentleman who literally started a lot of his career competing in the Northeast Marketplace, a champion from the uh, Thompson International Speedway, the Stafford Motor Speedway, and other short tracks. They pull into formation, two by two, ready to do battle. What's it going to be? This is what we refer to as the big dance. This time, as they work their magic and head back to the line, from the starter stand, we're getting an indication that it is less than two to go. Pace car picks up the field as they head down the back straightaway. They'll work the cars from side to side to create some magic as they work off turn number four. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a wave as they come down to the line. This is what modified racing is all about. Make some noise. Give them a shout and give them a send off. We are ready. Hey, we definitely are excited to be pumped up and ready to do battle. Ryan joining me here at Broadcast Central. Pace car will pull away from the field as they head down the back straightaway. Final chance to tighten up the belts. Ready as the spotters are high atop Broadcast Central. This is what modified racing is all about. Deep in a turn number three. Yellow flag still remains out. Lutz, a gentleman who's shown so much talent and potential. They feel that he is one of the outstanding standouts of 2020. And what about Anthony Nacella? The kid in the race race car. A lot of people might have counted out race for Cassie, but not Anthony. And not the legend that is attached to that brand with Eddie Plenty Jr. Side by side and wheel to wheel. They head off turn number two. Pace car pulls away as they wind down and get ready to go in green flag competition here. This is the first night. This is the first lap of 2020 here at the New Smyrna Speedway for the Tour Type Modified as they rumble to the line. Green, 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 and we're racing. And it is much to the slight advantage down in turn one. And it's the 46 car slotting up the track in front of the 92, Anthony Nocella. Ben, you mentioned the 92. I think he's going to make some noise here this week. Now he's going to fight off the 07 and the 60. Matt Hirschman, fast cars coming behind him. Who's it going to be at the line? They are side by side in the grip for the third and the fourth position. That's Patrick Emily. Jan Lee, legendary driver for number Ooh, 25. Trouble, big who trouble. was a who superhero. We've got a spin down in turns one and two. Two cars to the bottom of the racetrack. Joe DeGracia, one of those cars over there. Ben, it looks like the 14 Brock Brown also involved. The 23 got hit hard over there in turn number one to bring out the event. First caution with just one lap complete. So tough break. Not the way that those drivers wanted to start the World Series. DeGracia took a huge shot over there as we got one coming down pit road. That's one of the Catalano cars into the pit area. It certainly is. That's Tyler, who is a, a youngster who literally cut his teeth here in last year's event and now we can see the number 41 car as it has uh, stopped to the inside of the racetrack with the front end in two different directions. Kevin Shea with that number 41 car. They were looking for some uh, just to get some seat time and some track time. He's out of Mystic, Connecticut and uh, 
they run at the Waterford Speed Bowl. So uh, car number 14 is back behind the wall for Brock Brown. In that machine is also got the left front wheel towed, and now the right front wheel goes in the opposite direction as well. The ironic part is nobody seems to be there to assist him, and you can see it looks like the story, Ryan, of a left rear flat on the number 23 car as he's trying to head down a pit road. Now, remember, these cars, caution laps do not count. So a little different strategy, different situation. It is green flag racing, and as we said and seen so many times before, the story in this one is to be patient. Even though it's 50 laps, these cars are very, very quick, but it is essential that you don't burn up your tires. And by starting out with a 50-lap event, it's different than we've done in the past. We usually start out with 35 laps in the competition, but this is a rare opportunity. Now, those of you that are listening in to us, that uh, are joining us here for this first presentation, a lot of you uh, might go to your favorite short track and see great competition on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. But what makes this division so unique is the concept of the automobiles themselves. The only body panel used on these cars that is stock in appearance is the roof. Everything else is pretty much handmade and manufactured of its own type and design. For 2020, like in 2019, shocks are the key to the management and the shock setup. And then, of course, we've got the combination of Troyer and LFR joining hands, per se, and becoming one of the industry leaders. Fury also involved in a southern version of the modified tour car. The race works, and then, of course, car number six, a gentleman by the name of Mike Paquette out of Connecticut is the, the man that created that car. Ryan Priest was involved with a lot of the uh, work behind the scenes to create something new and different. The CD car has traditionally been around for an awful lot of seasons. And it is a very strong chassis combination at the Stafford Motor Speedway in Stafford Springs, Connecticut, one of the most competitive half miles in the country. Lights are on on the safety vehicle at the point. We're being told one time before they're set to go back to green. The good news at the tail of the field, the 23, Joe DeGracia going to be able to rejoin the field after the contact over there in turns number one and two. So looks like uh, we're going to lose the 14 and the... That other machine that was involved there. So the 23 going to rejoin the pack behind your race leader. The 46, Craig Lutz, 92, Anthony Nosella, Patrick Emerling, Matt Money Hirschman, Ryan Priest will be your top five here for the restart. Well, we only have one lap into the record books here. We are set. The field is doubled up and ready to try it all over again. They head down the back straight away. Pace car pulls away in the competition here. We haven't even seen anything happen yet. We've only won a half mile. Imagine the next time you're on the highway, take a look at the signs, and you'll see that a half mile seems like a long distance, but not when you're running a modified here at the new Smyrna Speedway. Green, 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 and we're racing. Back to turn one. Let's see who will get the jump this time down into turn number one. Lutz up the track. Nocella trying to power around the outside. Dead even as they come down the back straightaway. Top four cars trying to stay with each other as they go into turn number three. Nocella pops the nose out in front off corner number four. Still dead even as they come down the line. They come off the turn like a swarm of bees that has been rattled in the nest. Nocella goes to the outside, steps on the gas. He's a great short track midget driver. Two-time champion on the modified racing series. They come off turn number four like the point of an arrow. It is Nocella to lead it. Lutz in second, and here comes big money Matt. Matt, who's won on the ROC, won on the Wheel and Modified Tour, won on the Tri-Tracks, and won most of the big money events. Tap to the bumper. Lutz, car number 46, gives him a shot to the back end of Nocella. Pulls out a line. They come off the turn like they're bump drafting at New Hampshire International. Boy, it was a close call between Patrick Emmeling and a six-car Ryan Priest that time. They both gathered up here on the front straightaway. 
Field trying to work single file as Priest takes a look to the inside of the 07 one more time. Nocella still your leader in a gaggle of cars in the middle of the pack battling for position. Matt Hirschman, the fast qualifier earlier, has worked his way up for third and now setting his sights on the 46 to Craig Lutz as they go down the back straight away into turn number three. The story is all of a sudden Ryan Priest. One of the hometown boys who did good on the Major League circuit. He's a fan favorite up in the northeastern region of the country. Car number six, his owner, Eddie Partridge, owns the Riverhead Raceway in Riverhead, Long Island, New York, where he has been a part of that facility for many years before making that purchase. Little further back in the field, keep your eyes on the white number two car. That is part of the Gershaw Recycling Group. That is J.R. Batuccio. I remember when Vituccio came to this racetrack at the age of 16. Then it was considered young, not by today's standards. He's back today, and he's looking stronger than ever. He, he is part of a stable of about four cars that they brought out. And Blewett now working at the 36 at Dave Sapienza towards the middle of the pack. Things starting to sort out. The butterflies have settled down here a little bit. These guys have been anxious to get going since Thursday practice when a handful came out to practice. And now it's finally under race conditions. The early caution. Now things settling down with Anthony Nocella, your leader in the 92. Craig Lutz second. Matt Hirschman sitting, waiting back there in the third spot as Ryan Priest and Patrick Emmerling continue to battle for position for their back. They still battle here as the leaders are about to catch the tail end of the field. Most everybody now single file throughout the pack, clicking some laps off. 10 laps will be 11 laps complete this time by Ben. Car number 21 is the story of the afternoon. Jimmy Blewett, they call him Mr. Showtime. In a car that proudly displays Trump for president on the back end of the race car, they lost an engine in practice. Tommy Baldwin Jr. is the crew chief. Nice move. Turn three. Blewett dive bombs down to the inside. Clean sweep. He pulls up behind J.R. Batuccio. Back to the front of the field. Anthony Nacella starts to string it out. Heavy lap traffic up ahead as they rumble into turn number three. Leader comes up in a lapped automobile. Back to the strike they come. And we got a Caution crash flag in is turn out. one. Brett Maservi around in the 45. That's going to bring out the race's second yellow. Tough break over there for one of the newcomers to the World Series. The 45 car turnaround in turn number one. Second caution out. Just 12 laps complete. So a long way to go, but things looking good up front for Nocella in the 92. And, and Ben, you were talking about him earlier. I do agree with you. I think he's going to make some noise. He is uh, definitely one of my picks to be a title contender. And I think Matt Hirschman might be the early favorite. What do you think? You know, there is no question when you look down through this field of cars, you've got some of the top contenders in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour is the open events, like the Tri-Track Series, like the ROC Circuit, and weekly racing that uh, takes place that also hosts several of the open style events like the Stafford Motor Speedway with its 80 lap concept events. And now we'll take a look now as the number 45 machine being checked over the driver who is okay. Brett Missouri comes from a great racing family. They are literally the founding fathers of the Pro 4 modified division and concept. And, uh, his dad and grandfather uh, all had tremendous success, as well as him with that number 45 car securing a title in the Pro 4 Modifieds back in 2017. They came here to get some street, some, excuse me, some track time. Car number 70 is the Rich Parker machine headed down on Pitt Road, and they're bringing the field down the front straight away and uh, bring out a red flag situation as they'll be removing the number 45 car as we speak. Now, this is a rare opportunity for you, the race fans in attendance, and for those of you that are streaming us live to uh, see these automobiles as they carry all their glory of the start of a new season. And we talked about it before for a few short moments. The NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour is the oldest division in NASCAR. And what makes the series so successful is the fact that it is so competitive and it really has a foundation that originates both in the north and the south. So uh, the next stop on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour will be in the south and then it'll head back to the northern region of the country. And it all winds down at the end of the season for the final points race 
and that's held right in the heart of modified country. These cars, as we said before, weigh in at 2,600 pounds. There's a great shot of the number six car of Ryan Priest. Now, some might say that Eddie Partridge always traditionally ran Troyer cars, but Ryan Priest had a passion and an understanding for a gentleman by the name of Mike Paquette who built these CD cars. And if you go back and look at the history of a CD car, you'll discover that it dates way back to another name that might be familiar with you. That name was Jeff Bodine. Jeff Bodine literally was one of the individuals that was a founding father in creating the concept. A gentleman by the name of Bob Cuneo, who was an individual that built world-class bobsleds, was also the man that created this very, very unique chassis combination. And even though it might be some 25 years plus old, it still has a winning flavor. And that winning flavor can be put to the test by Ryan Priest on any occasion on any different racetrack. Now, Priest is only going to be running three of these events for obvious reason. He has commitments, Ryan, as we both know, mm -hmm. uh, across the pond, we'll call it. He'll be at the big track. Yes, he will be. Um, so that's kind of a unique story. The other unique story is the car that leads this event. The young driver by the name of Anthony Nacella. Now, I've watched Anthony come up from the ranks through uh, midgets. He started out in quarter midgets as a youngster. The Nacella family owned and operated. They're in the paving business car. A gentleman by the name of JJ helps him out, kind of a character, a unique guy also as well. But Anthony Nacella chose a different combination, and it was a Raceworks chassis. Eddie Flemke, Ed Flemke Sr., actually competed here, and so did Eddie Flemke Jr., and had success. Eddie Jr. had success driving for the Hillbilly Race Team. And that kind of was a unique story. But this car was kind of a, well, an experimental car that was built exclusively by Eddie Flemke Jr. to put Raceworks back in the map, and it is working. And you're seeing that, obviously. So hats off to those individuals as well. We said before there's been a rivalry in the off-season. Uh, the actual cars that are Troyer-type modifieds out of Rochester, New York, a gentleman by the name of Billy Colton, and the legendary Maynard Troyer. There's no question about it. Maynard Troyer, not only is he Mr. Modified, but he was a man that pioneered the concept of today's modifieds. And a lot of the things in today's modified world was created by Maynard Troyer. He passed away, and of course, his legacy stays and goes on and continues on. And if you talk with any of the young drivers, you mention the name Maynard Troyer like Richie Evans, and it'll bring a certain smile and a certain smirk to their face as well. They understand who the founding fathers were and what they did for the sport. Robbie Fuller, who came here when he was a youngster with his dad, his dad's race car was driven by Tony Stewart in one of the most controversial World Series for modified racing at this racetrack ever. His dad, Bob Fuller, brought the car here. Drivers like Tim Conley drove it, had a lot of success and so forth. But he only seemed to want to run here at New Smyrna. And then Robbie Fuller came to this racetrack and uh, was part of a race team that I actually owned back then that was driven by Bruce D'Alessandro. In 1996, that car was one of the three-time winners in the competition here with Robbie Fuller as one of the crew members on that race team. He advanced, went down south. He became one of the best tire changers there was. And then he continued to set his marks high. And Robbie Fuller was involved with creating a company called LFR. LFR, well, it moved forward rather rapidly. The success of those chassis seemed to work. The combination. And then Robbie Fuller put behind the wheel a young gentleman who's a, a driver that we hear a lot about and you will hear a lot about in 2020, a guy by the name of Chase Dowling. Chase Dowling, who then was just 20 years of age, set behind the wheel of the SNS paving car to finish second on the wheel of modified tour point standing a year ago. And it didn't stop there. He went on to win the big event, the musket event at New Hampshire International Speedway 
not this past season, but the season before. And what did Robbie Fuller do? He raised that bar even higher. He purchased Troyer Engineering. He revamped the LFR concept car. And the combination is getting stronger and better all the time. But there's another version of all of that. It's a Fury race car. It's built in the South. It was the original, well, it's hard to say. It depends on who you're talking about. But those Fury race cars, they are dominant and they are strong as well. And with a name like Fury attached to it, and Yuri and those folks, you know that that's going to always be a success story as well. So those are just some of the many stories. There's the heartbreaker for the Missouri number 45 car as it's being slung hammock style and brought back to the center of the pit area. So they'll be firing the cars up in just a few short moments, Ryan, as uh, we are about ready to get things kicked back off one more time for the presentation uh, here. And uh, again, we appreciate all of you. A banner crowd coming out here for the Hart families. Great race facility. This is one of the nicest short tracks in America, and it's a real credit to three generations of the Hart family and their inspiration as they aspire to make this facility the grand track and the grand track of Speed Weeks. There's no question about that. As you look back into the record books, the names that have been associated. It's like who hasn't been yes, here? You go back through the look. We talk about the Richie Evans Memorial event. Tiger Tom Baldwin. We've got Tom Baldwin Jr. being the crew chief on the 21 of Jimmy Belewitt. Stephen Park. Jeff Bodine. Look who and we have now. Ryan Priest who's going to be in the Daytona 500 later on this week. He was the story of the Daytona 500 last year. But the cars have come back to life here. Ben, I, I love sitting here listening to the, uh, the knowledge that you have for these tour type modifieds. I've learned so much from you the last couple of years and it's an honor to be up here calling this race with you as the, uh, the modified roar back to life. We should be back to racing here in a few moments. Just 12 laps complete. Anthony Nocella looking strong up at the front. Greg Lutz with a good run. Matt Hurston sitting back there in the third position. Patrick Emmerling, Ryan. Car number 17 is still Ryan stopped at the start finish line area. And that, of course, is Jeremy Gertzner. They are really expecting some big things. That's the PSR products car. And for those of you that don't know, PSR is a company that manufactures suspension components and parts like spindles and things of that nature as well. And uh, last year, it was uh, Meisner that sat behind the wheel of their particular car. And they come here to do some testing. Eric Goodale's car, car number 58, is down on pit road along with the number 54 machine part of the Catalano Racing Enterprises family. That is Tommy Catalano. Andy Petrie pulls in in the 33 Go Fountain Racing car. So a number of drivers hit the pit road here under this caution. You know, that's a very interesting concept there when you think about it. Yes, sir. Andy loves the modifieds. I've talked to Andy many, many times. Besides being in the broadcast business, the crew chief business, and all of that, and he's worked with the very best, the top of the line when it comes to... Uh, uh, individuals in our great sport but he wanted to come here and race now we've seen that fountain car run before and we've seen it be extremely strong at times but then at other times it's lacked what it's lacked we don't know we're just broadcasting yeah. but what we do know is this that if anybody can make some magic here with that race car it is going to be featured today. you know I, I was surprised to see the uh, the entry list it had to be announced on it the entire time and then we find out that it's going to be Andy Petrie. What a surprise that was. We look for good things for the 33 car here this week. Let's reset the field as we get about ready to double them back up. Anthony Nocella will be starting on the outside. It's his choice. The leader has the choice of outside or inside. Lutz will be on the inside, row number one. Row number two will be the 60 of Matt Hirschman, the 07 of Emerling, Ryan Priest, Rip Kama. Ebersol. Then we go to the number 16 machine of Anthony Cecily. Don't count out Cecily because he's one of those guys, Ryan. He will start out slow, but he will come on strong. Behind that, the 36 car uh, of Dave Zapienza. And along with Mike Willis. We had Willis 
turned in some top three finishes. Remember in last year's series. He's a sleeper to watch. This that's year for sure. exactly right. Getting ready to go back to Green Flag Racing. Anthony Nocello, the 92 year race leader, up on the outside. He brings the field down to the green as they charge down into turn number one. He's going to get the jump. It's going to be Nocella in the 92 up on the outside. Here comes Emerling in the 07. New player at the front. Well, he becomes the tail that wags the dog, but all of a sudden, they are side by side as they come rumbling back to the line. For the fifth, for the runner up spot. Here comes Matt Hirschman. He gives a little tap to the buffer. Down in the rumble strips goes Lux. It upsets the race car. And all of a sudden, Hirschman is into the third spot. Here comes Ryan Priest. White and black, number six car. Goes to the outside. Car a little bit loose coming off the turn, Ryan. But he gathers it back. But he's just testing the water. Kind of sticking your big toe in to making sure it's just the right temperature. Well, he almost opened the door for the 32 of Rakima there. Rakima settles back into six. Now everybody getting single file. Hirschman up the track. Lutz trying to find his way underneath. Can't do it that time. Everybody trying to get it sorted out so we can click off some more laps. Nocella still your leader. Emerling in second. Hirschman in third. He's been there much of the race waiting for his opportunity to pounce. We know he's got a quick car. He's set fast time in qualifying. Now he's got to find a way around. These other fast race cars in front of him. There is 10 cars running in nose-to-tail formation. Nobody is stepping out of the line quite yet. All of a sudden, just as I say that, Matt Hirschman gives a shot to the back bumper of Patrick Emerling. Meanwhile, take a look a little further back. Blue number 21 car gets a little bit out of shape for Jimmy Zachariah. Zachariah, his family's run the series for a long time. That's Jeff Gallup in the Cerebello Auto Sale, number four car. That's a battle ranging down at the bottom, just out of the top ten, as they continue to work the matches. 18 laps of 50 now completed the record book. Here in night number one, so far, the dominant car has been Anthony Nocella, car number 92. Nocella still leading the 07, now putting some distance between himself and Patrick Emmerling as Matt Hirschman. He's getting racing in the 60. He took a peek to the inside of Emmerling. He's trying to get him set up here in one and two. Everybody still nose to tail, single file. Nobody really able to break away except that 92 of Anthony Nocella. He's got about a 3-4 car length lead as they come down to the strike to complete lap number 20. Still remain. While this has been happening, the leader Nocella is starting to string it out. If you look at the lap time, you discover that he is getting quicker. Meanwhile, Eberling spotter is trying to tell him to guard the position, but at the same time, slow the pace down just a bit because the heavy hitters, the heat is on. And all of a sudden, we see it is car number 60 that was always right there to contend, but now he's starting to get real racy again as they come back off turn two. Now 22 laps in the books. Hirschman still slotted back there in that third position. Like you said, Ben, he's just waiting. Spotter's telling these guys what's going on in front of them, what's going on behind them. Right now, we're getting nice and orderly, trying to click off these laps, approaching the halfway point. Nocella, still the dominant car up front, still trying to pull away. He's got about four car lengths as they come out of two. I want you to keep your eyes on the number 60 car. That, of course, is the Matt Hirschman machine. You know, that car looks like a sleeper, but in reality, Matt Hirschman has the ability. You know, you've heard the saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But the reality is that Matt Hirschman is as patient as his dad was. He's not going to use up the tires early. We are approaching the halfway point as they come back to the line. Let's set the field at the halfway. We set up the leader. Emily is in second. Hirschman sets in the third position. Fourth spot is Lutz. Fifth position is Ryan Freeze. Rakima is sixth. Eversol is seventh. Then it's blew it up to the eighth spot. Ninth is Bertuccio. And rounding out the top ten is Jeremy Gertzner. There's your top ten. So what do you think, Ben? Does anybody got anything for this 92 car? It's looking good for him. Is Hirschman just sitting back there waiting? What about Emily? What do you think? You know, it, it's kind of interesting to watch this because Anthony Nacella unloaded that race car and it was quick late from the word go. There was no question about it. He was confident and he felt that he had a race car that could win. I think we're seeing a sample of that confidence as we speak. Let's look a little further back in the field in the heartbreak story perhaps of the event. 
it is the number 21 machine. Tommy Baldwin Jr. was hired by Jimmy Blewett's grandfather to help turn the wrenches in the magic. They lost an engine in practice. That car was so quick, but now all of a sudden he's coming to life. And right there with him is his teammate. He just went around J.R. Vitucchio. That team trying to turn heartbreak into redemption here as Blewett getting racy with the five of Eversol as they go down the back straightaway now. Eversol that red number five. Blewett the white 21 with his teammate in tow trying to move up through the field, but everybody remains in their position single file. They just went through a gaggle of lap traffic. Everybody was able to make it safely through. Nocella still with that big lead with 20 laps to go. So we're getting to the end of this thing. 20 to go for Nocella in the 92. You know, Hirschman still searching for that second spot. Keep your eyes on what is happening with Jimmy Belewitt. He is coming to the front of the field like a surgeon with a knife, making every precise cut and everything count. He is on the back bumper of the Eversaw machine. That is at the bottom of the top 10. Meanwhile, back to the front of the field, it is still Anthony Nacella, the youngster. Two titles in the modified racing series. He's had some tremendous runs on the Tri-Track Series, the Open Shows at the Stafford Motor Speedway, the Open 80s he's been very strong at as well. Well, the teammates about got into it. Petuccio took a peek to the inside of Blewett off turn number four. Blewett a little bit loose, hangs onto it. So now here comes that two car looking to the inside again. That's the best battle on the racetrack. Although Matt Hirschman up front putting the heat on the 07 Patrick Emmerling. That's good news for the 92 Nocella. I don't know if they're going to be able to catch that 92 without the help of a yellow flag here as we put 34 laps up on the scoreboard. It'll be 35 complete 15 to go next time. Time starting to run out for these guys. Here comes Hirschman looking to the bottom. Meanwhile, as he comes off turn number four, he can't do it. He'll run back in the tire track. Still further back in the field. That battle between Jimmy Belewitt in the white number 21 car and the two machine of J.R. Batuccia. That's been a strong battle, even though they're teammates. Nobody's giving up an inch on this racetrack. There's no question about that. If you've got to watch in timing and scoring, you will discover that Anthony Nacella is almost two tenths quicker than the cars running in second and third position. Meanwhile, the Lutz car dropped off the pace just a bit. Remember, just a few laps ago, he was right up there with the number 60 machine of Matt Hurston. Hurston now sees some daylight on the bottom. Can't do it. Little cat and mouse action like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Here he comes. Not Reels able. him in. Can't do it though, Ryan. He's Not giving it his him. all. He looks to the inside again. They're starting to slowly close in on this 92 as they battle. A little touch there off turn number four. And this shows you how competitive this field's going to be. Hurstman. Maybe everyone's favorite here this week, fastest qualifier, but has not been able to move up except for one spot. Still sitting in third this time by Ben. Just 10 laps to go for Anthony Nocella. 10 to go this time by. Time is running out. There is less than 10 circuits. That's five miles left in the competition. Might not seem like much, but when you're Anthony Nocella and you're out in front, it seems like an eternity. And just as impressive, the heat is on. Here comes Hirschman. Bottom shot move. Car dances. Oh, trouble again with hey. Degracia Zapienza down through the grass. We and what a nice in. save. Dave Zapienza gets the Timex timely move of the event as car number 23 gets crossed up. More contact down in turn one. I don't know if we're done yet. They're trying to wreck. They just haven't found a place to do it. This could change the entire complexion as Joey D. Garcia trying to get off the racetrack. We're still under green. Here 42 comes circuits. And He's now Hirschman sees daylight. Going, going. Will Ooh. it be gone to the bottom of turn number one? You might have him this time in one and two. Emerling still fighting back using that top side momentum. And there goes the 60. Just can't clear him. Last trap. Paul Townsend in front of him. Hirschman up to second. Now going to be six to go. Does he have enough time to reel in the race leader, Anthony Nocella? High five, five circuits remaining as they come back to the stripe. 
Anthony Nacella has been like Superman at the front of the field. Cape straight out, hands pointed forward, and he has been dominant. But here comes Matt Hirschman. Hirschman comes up on the Petrie machine. Petrie gets up and out of the way, just like the K&N race we just saw. Late race drama, fast car closing in on the leader. Does he have enough time? Petrie up out of the way. Here comes Hirschman. He's closed it down to about three. Carling spent 46 laps complete, just four to go. Two miles to get it done for Hirschman in the 60. There's no question about it. Anthony Nacella's commanding lead is all but suddenly gone. He heads down into turn number three. Here comes Hirschman. What a Just drive. like we predicted. He is all over him, like gum on the bottom of your shoe. As he works the bottom lane, down into turn number one. He's there. Nacella shuts the door. There's no room at the end this time. 47 up on the board. When they come back to the stripe, here comes Hirschman again. And he looks down to the bottom. He's right there, bumper to bumper with two laps to go. What's Hirschman's move going to be? Does he try the outside? He looks outside in one. Can't find the grip. Cuts it back down to the bottom. He's going to charge off turn number two. Here we go, Ben. This is the race. Coming into turn number three, Hirschman right now there. Now Hirschman changes his strategy. Looks up the hill. Pulls back in the tire tracks. White flag is out as they go down into turn number one for the final time. Anthony Nacella finds Matt Hirschman peeking at the bottom of the racetrack. Heavy traffic up ahead. Turn number three. All eyes are on. Here comes Matt Hirschman to the outside. Anthony Nacella as they rumble off turn number four. Nacella. What a squeaker of a finish. It is Anthony Nacella to take down the win and secure the victory. An amazing finish as car number 60, just as we called it on cue, Matt Hirschman makes his presence known and shows why he is a champion and an outstanding front runner as well. Ben, what a finish and worth every minute of it here tonight. Matt Hirschman gave him a run. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Anthony Nocella, your race winner. Look at the final circuit. Those of you that are watching live streaming with us, Matt Hirschman went up to the outside of the racetrack, and then he, the back end of the car started to whip around. Nacella tried to hold on, and the magic was there. And Anthony Nacella would be the dominant force to take down the impressive victory. Quick rundown of the top ten unofficially. Matt Hirschman in second. Patrick Emmerling is third. Ryan Fries for fourth. Craig Lutz for five. Tyler Rapina to finish in the sixth spot. J.R. Verduccio is seventh. Kyle Ebersol to finish in eighth. Jeremy Gertzner in nine. And Mike Willis to finish in ten. Well, they're getting out of the automobile. 11th position goes to Jimmy Blewett. Dave Zapienza to finish in the 12th spot. Eddie McCarthy, 13th. Brad Van Houten, 14th. And Tommy Catalano to finish among the top 15. Jeff Gallup, 16th position. Jimmy Zachariah, 17th. Anthony Cecily, 18th position. Eric Goodale, mechanical woes, 19th spot. And 20th position, Amy Catalano. Andy Petrie, 21st over Paul Townsend in 22nd. Joey Garcia, 23rd. Tyler Catalano, 24th followed by Rich Parker and Brett Mazurvi. We're looking now at a very ecstatic and happy Anthony Nacella about to get out of his race car. Down in the winner's circle here, let's go down track side to Derek Persiglia. Well, Anthony Nacella leads most of the race, but Matt Hirschman kept it real honest those last few laps. When he finally got past Patrick Emmerling, did you start to get worried? Yeah, you know, uh, I know we had a pretty good car, but I know uh, he's always fast here, and I knew he'd be there at the end, and kind of, he's probably one of the best at saving his tires till the end there, making a run, and uh, he knows this place real well, and, you know, we had a good starting spot up there in the front row, and I just figured if I could keep him behind me, we might have a shot there at the end, because I knew he'd uh, be able to save his tires and be tough to get by, but I figured if I could uh, make my car a little wide, kind of reverse the roll, it might be a little hard to get by, and, uh, I just got to thank all my guys for working hard, kind of unloaded the car, and it was pretty quick right off the trailer, which was a good thing, made it a little easier, but thank all them for working hard to make it that way, and Mike Pettit for a great engine, and uh, Eddie Plenty from Raceworks, you know, kind of the only car down here with one of those chassis, and uh, able to put a run on like that, kind of pretty happy, good start to the week. With a race like this, where it's only 50 laps, is there any type of tire conservation, or is it just go hard right from the beginning? 
No, I think, uh, I mean, this place has got some grip, but it also can, you're moving along pretty quick there, so kind of choose the right rear up if you're not cautious there. And uh, you know, I spun them pretty good on one of the restarts there, trying to get the lead, and, you know, that didn't hurt it. And uh, tried to pace myself out front and have my spotter keep me updated on the gap. And, uh, you know, I kind of probably should have saved it a little bit longer, you know, kind of stay there, but pedal it a little bit. And uh, it was close there at the end. I kind of was getting real free, but uh, at least we were able to pull it off. Well, he sure made it an exciting finish. Let's have a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Anthony Nacella. And now it looks like we're going to go to the man that finished so close. It is Derek Persiglio with Matt Hirschman. Well, down here on the front straightaway, Matt Hirschman tonight. Real strong run, competitive run for you. So close at the end, they say if you can't win, be spectacular, but you needed another lap, didn't you? Well, yeah, it was really, um, my chances were getting real good, uh, but I uh, just ran out of time, but no excuses. Uh, you know, the, the 07 and I started right next to each other. I was ahead of him, but then when uh, the restart, he got ahead of me, and uh, that took away some time at the end. But, uh, you know, exciting finish, and it's Monday night, so, uh, you know, I'm happy with where we're at. Uh, you know, I'd like to win. I'd like to win every race, but uh, that's just not going to happen. And, um, you know, we got four ahead of us uh, coming up, so uh, it was a good show. Uh, you know, that's modified, so put on a better show than any Fender class uh any day of the week so uh thanks for coming out tonight and uh hopefully you'll be back again this week we got more shows for you with a race like this how frustrating is it from the driver's seat knowing that you can reach the leader but you've got a car in front of you that's just keeping you from getting there well you know it's just a matter of taking you know making passes and moving forward uh you know the the last few laps there uh you know i was able to I could have drove in a lot harder, but I uh, had the 92 right there, and I bumped into him a few times. I uh, really had to fetch up on it uh, hard on the brakes, but uh, it uh, wasn't meant to be tonight, but I think we can make it happen this week. Well, this first night of racing was any indication of how exciting it's going to be. It's going to be one incredible week. Third place finisher, and no question about it, Derek, he was strong as well. And now we just take a look at the replay, and it was literally less than half a car length as Nacella managed to hold on to take down the win. Back down, track side. All right, well, Patrick Emmerling is down here in victory lane. Podium finish, well, not victory lane, but podium finish for him, along with all the other drivers that have finished up here tonight. But was it a case of just being just a little bit off? Yeah, you know, we had our great car earlier on, and then we just kind of, uh, you know, faded in the last 10 laps. I just started losing my side bite, uh, getting in the corner, and that was done. And um, But earlier on, we had a car that could contend there. So um, we're going to come back tomorrow and um, uh, come out with a different package. When you run like this during the week, does it get you geared up for the season that you have coming up back home? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you get, you're getting in the car, you're getting laps, and uh, all laps help, so. And also can try and, trying to contend for a championship. Patrick Emerling is doing just that here at New Smyrna during Speed Weeks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible evening of competition. Of course, the excitement of our ARCA program, and, of course, almost a near photo finish for the NASCAR Tour Type Modifieds. On behalf of everybody here at the Hart Family's Playground of Speed, the New Smyrna Speedway, we invite you to come back tomorrow night for more of the same, the best racing anywhere in the country, as the excitement of all the divisions, including the Modifieds, return here to the New Smyrna Speedway. On behalf of Ryan Stevens and all of us here, we welcome you and ask you to come out and be a part of short track racing for the World Series of Speedway Action here at New Samaritan.